I have gone through a lot of IGCSE physics paper two past papers, and I have calculated the probability of each types of questions coming from each of the topics. So I know that some of you guys have your exams coming up soon for paper two. And today I will be predicting what's coming on that paper. And I will also be showing you some tips and tricks and some of the common types of questions for each topic and what they usually like to bring. So make sure to watch until the end. So the first topic is physical quantities and measurement techniques. So the probability of this coming is 75%. So expect it to come, but then it might not come. But if it comes, it's always just one question. And what they ask you, so the first it, they ask you is uses of different apparatus. Now this apparatus may include rulers, micrometers, and stopwatches, and others too. And the second part, what they really like to ask you is scalar, scalar and vector quantities. So you should know examples of scalar quantities and also examples of vector quantities. So what they usually do is they give you choices and they would ask you which choice has only scalar quantities and then you have to choose or which choice has only vector quantities and you have to choose. And the last one they usually like to ask is resultant vectors from diagrams. So this has been common in the new syllabus, which starts from 2023. So each, almost every paper has this question as their first question. So this type of question will ask you, will give you vector diagrams and you have to determine the resultant vector. So let's look at the example. So forces of three Newton and four Newton act at right angles as shown. And what's the resultant force? So the resultant force, we know that if three Newton is upwards and this is to the right, the resultant force is gonna be, we have to draw the, the two forces as head and tail. So we have this one, which is OZ, and the head of this is coming this side. The resultant force is going to be in this direction, which is on the OY line. So it's either C or D. And then we can use Pythagoras to find the hypotenuse, which would give us five Newtons. So that's the resultant. So expect this type of questions. Now, the second topic is motion. So the probability is 225%. So expect at least two questions in each of in each paper related to motion. So what they usually ask you is, the first one is calculating velocity, acceleration, and distance. So they, they usually give you graphs, maybe distance time graphs or velocity time graphs, and they might ask you to calculate velocity, acceleration, and distance. They also ask you to use different motion graphs and interpret them. But what they mainly ask you is distance time graphs or velocity time graphs. These are the two types of graphs. And understanding free fall and terminal velocity. Now this is important to understand. Let's look at an example. The diagram shows speed time graph for a car. Which row describes the motion of the car at point X and at point Y? Now we know this is a speed time graph. So at point X, it's increasing speed or uniform acceleration. So it's either C or D moving with constant speed, changing speed. And at Y, it's a straight horizontal line representing constant motion. So the answer is gonna be D over here. Now the third one, this is also one of the most popular questions on the paper two exam, which is forces. So the probability as you can see is 550%. So expect at least five questions in each paper. And what they ask you is the first one is mass and weight. They might ask you, they might give you the mass and ask you to calculate the weight, or they might twist the question as much as they want, but just as long as you know the difference between mass and weight, you'll be fine. The next one is density. So they, they might give you the volume and the mass and ask you to calculate the density, or they can ask you to rearrange the formula and find any of the missing, either the mass or the volume. 
The next one is the turning effect of forces. So on this one, it's merely about moment. And they will usually give you diagrams and they would ask you to calculate something that has to do with moment. The second one, the third, fourth one is center of mass. Now center of mass doesn't usually come on this paper two exams, but you know, make sure you understand it. The next one is momentum. Momentum, what they usually ask you for paper two is something that had, that has to do with conservation of momentum. So know that the momentum before collusion is equals to the momentum after collusion. Let's look at an example. So this example is mainly based on moment or turning effect. So it asks, the diagram shows four beams, each of negligible, negligible weight and freely pivoted. Which beam is not in equilibrium? So for the beam to be in equilibrium, let's say this is a beam. So the clockwise moment should be equals to the anti-clockwise moment. So now we look at the, each question. So this one, to find the moment, it's force times distance. So the force is six newtons. The distance is one meter. So the moment is over here is six. On this side, it's also three times two, which is six. So we can cancel out A. This is in equilibrium. B, the distance is two times six, that's 12. And over here, six times two, that's also 12. This is also in equilibrium. Part C, the distance is two times three, that's six. And over here, the distance is three. I mean, the distance is one, the force is three. That, so three times one, that's three. This object is not in equilibrium. So the answer is gonna be C. The fourth topic, which is work, energy, and power. So the probability of this question coming is 300%. So expect at least two or three questions relating to this topic. So what they usually ask you has to do with forms of energy, and it's usually kinetic energy or gravitational potential energy. The next one is energy resources. Now, this is a very common type of question. They would ask you which energy, they would give you a description, and they would ask you which energy resource is that about. The next one is work done and efficiency. So this one, they would usually ask you to calculate the work done and the efficiency, or they can ask you which, which machine is the most efficient and power. So we know that power is work done over time or energy transferred over time. So make sure you know that. Let's look at an example. A child runs up a set of stairs four times. The time taken for each run is recorded which time is measured when a child's useful power is greatest. So this one, we know that power is energy transferred over time. So we want the power to be the greatest. So for the power to be the greatest, the time has to be the lowest because as time decreases, the power increases. So the low, we just pick the lowest time, which is a 10 seconds. The next one, pressure. So the probability is 100%. So expect one question from pressure. So what they usually ask you is, you have to know how to calculate pressure in solids and liquids. So in solids, it's force over area. And in liquids, it's density times gravity times height. And make sure you know when to use this formula. And the next one is how pressure affects, how air affects pressure. So they might give you different scenarios which have different surface areas and they can ask you which one has the greatest pressure. And the next one is calculating a pressure of an, on an object. So let's look at an example. So a dam holds water in a reservoir. The height of the water in the reservoir is 50 meters. So the density of water is 1,000 kilogram per meter cubed. What's the pressure due to water at the bottom of the dam? So we know it's a liquid. So pressure in liquid is density, which is 1,000, times gravity, which is 9.8, times the depth, which is 15. So when we calculate this, 
we get 147,000 to two significant figures that's like 150,000. So answer is going to be D. The next topic, the sixth one is thermal physics. So the probability is 300%. So accept ar expect around three questions per paper. And what they ask you is states of matter and particle model. So states of matter, you, you have to know the difference, the three states of matter, and you have to be able to differentiate between them, like the arrangement between them, the motion of particles. And the next one is thermal expansion. So the third one is specific heat capacity. You have to know the formula for specific heat capacity, which is Q is equals to mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. Make sure you know this formula and when to use it. So the last thing they ask you about thermal physics is the three types of transfer of thermal energy, which is conduction, convection, and radiation. So make sure you know how to differentiate between these and when these are used. Let's look at an example. Which statements about evaporation of water are correct? So let's look at each statement. Evaporation causes the remaining liquid to cool. That's true. During evaporation, the more energetic particles escape from the surface of the liquid. That's true. Evaporation only happens at 100 degrees Celsius. Now that part is not true. So what happens at a specific temperature? That's boiling. You also need to be able to differentiate between evaporation and boiling. So the answer for this is going to be B. 1 and 2. The next topic, 7. This is one of the most popular topics in IGSE Physics Paper 2, and you have a probability of 450%. So expect around 4 to 5 questions per paper. So you really have to understand this topic. So what they ask, they ask properties of waves. So you have to know what are trans transverse waves, longitudinal waves, and the different, so refraction, reflection, diffraction, you have to know this about waves, and light. So what they usually ask about light is they give you a diagram, and we have a lens and two focal points, and they ask you to draw the image of an object. So if an image is here, they would ask you to draw an, the image of an object, which would be something like this. So this is the image of an object. Or they could ask you the properties of the image of the object. The next one is the electromagnetic spectrum. So for this, you have to know that each one of them and according to the wavelength and according to the frequencies. The next one is sound. You have to know that sound is a longitudinal wave and we have to know the different properties of sound and wave diagrams. So this were the wave diagrams I was talking about. Let's look at an example. This is focusing on light. So a narrow beam of white light passes through a prism and is dispersed into a spectrum. Which row is correct? So now we know that the color order is going to be VibGior. This is the abbreviation VibGior. So we have violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. So number three is the one that's lower than all of them. So color one should be red because red is above all of them. So it's either B or C. Color two should be yellow, not blue. Since you don't have orange here, the next one is going to be yellow. So the answer is going to be C, red, yellow, and then blue. You have to memorize the order of these colors. Chapter 8, Electricity and Magnetism. Now this is the biggest topic in ITSC physics. So as you can see, the probability is whopping 975%. Yes, 975%. So expect around 10 questions per paper. So like this is a, the biggest percentage of your paper. 
So make sure you understand electricity and magnetism. So what they ask, so they ask you about electric charges. Make sure to know how like poles, like poles repel each other and unlike poles attract each other. Make sure to know properties of charge. The next one is electric circuit and circuit components. Make sure to know the symbol for most of the commonly used circuit components and make sure to differentiate between series and parallel electric circuits. The next one is magnetism. So you have to know properties of magnets like like poles repel, unlike poles attract each other. And the next one is electromagnetic effect. Now this has many parts. So you have to know electromagnetic in induction. Induction. And then you also have to know how DC and AC generators work. And also you have to know how the transformer works. So this is a pretty big topic. So make sure you understand it very well. Let's look at an example. This example is about circuits. The circuits shown contains three switches and four lamps, P, Q, R, S. Which switches must be closed to light only lamps P and R? So we want P and R to light. So if you want P and R to light, switch two doesn't have to be closed, that's for sure. But switch one has to be closed because we want to form a complete circuit. That switch one. Because we don't need to uh, close switch three because switch three up will light lamp S, but we want only lamp R and P to light. So that was gonna, answer is going to be A, which is going to be switch one only. Another example. Now this one is related to electromagnetic effects. So a wire is moved down in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field. Three changes are suggested. The speed of the movement of the wire is increased. The magnetic field strength is increased. The direction of the magnetic field is reversed. Now we want to know which change increases the EMF induced in the wire. So the speed of the movement of the wire determines the electromotive force. If it increases, the EMF also increases. The magnetic field strength, yeah, this also affects, this also affects it, but then we want the EMF to increase, but the magnetic field over here is decreasing. So two won't be the answer. And three, the direction of magnetic field is reversed. Now this wouldn't bring a change in the magnitude of the EMF, it would just reverse the direction. So this is also wrong. So our answer, which is going to be B1 only. The next one, nuclear physics. So the probability is 375%. So expect up to three questions, up to four questions per paper. And they usually come up at the last part of the paper. So what they ask, they ask about the atom. We have to know the structure. We have a nucleus and then we have electrons surrounding them. The next one is radioactivity. You have to know how how radioactivity is measured, which is in a Mueller counter, and the, the unit is count rate per minute. And you also have to know radioactive decay and count rate. So these two go hand in hand and equations of decay. So there are two equations. You have an alpha equation and you have a beta equation. So make sure to know what happens in each of these equations. And the next one, the last one is half-life graphs. So you have to understand and be able to interpret half-life graphs. And when you do that, make sure you, you represent the background radiation. So if they ask us what's the half-life of this element or this atom, make sure you remove the background radiation first. Let's look at an example. The graph shows how the count rate registered by a counter near, the, near to the sample of a radioactive isotope changes over a period of a few days. The background count rate is 5 counts per minute. What's the half-life of the isotope? So since the background radiation is 5 count rates per minute, 
this is 45 so we subtract 5 so 40 now we need the half-life so to find the half-life we just half the activity so 20 and then we go across on the x-axis and then we go down so this is close to 2.5 so the answer is going to be b 10 space physics now this top uh, topic is the one introduced in the new 2023 syllabus and the probability is 400 percent so expect four questions per each paper and what's interesting is this question starts from question number 37 now you know there are 40 questions on each paper so starting from question number 37 expect space questions space physics because that's what has been happening from the previous years, like May, June 2023, March 2023. All of the space questions are starting from question number 37. What they ask you. So they ask you about the Earth and the Moon. You have to know the different seasons, why they occur, and the solar system. You have to know the planets, the eight planets in the solar system. And you have to know about asteroids and comets and what they are. The next one is the life cycle of a star. So you have to know the life cycle of a star for a red giant and a red super giant. They will definitely ask this. And the last one is the universe and Hubble's constant. So you have to know what Hubble's constant is, but this is usually given. You have to know the formula for Hubble's constant, which is the speed of a galaxy over the distance traveled by the galaxy. So let's look at an example. Which quantity can be determined using the brightness of a supernova in a distant galaxy? Brightness of a supernova. So this is usually used for the Hubble's constant. How the formula is speed over distance. The speed is determined by redshift. And the distance is determined by the brightness of supernova. So it's the distance of a galaxy from the Earth. The answer is going to be B. So that was the last topic. I hope you guys have learned and you have enjoyed. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, make sure to drop them down below. And thank you for watching.